आउज़बिल्लाशतानजीम बसमीम अलहमदिल्लाबीन सलासलम अशरफुलम्बियाबलमसलिन वालबैत तयबीन ताहरीमासमिन अलमसलूमिन अल्लाम व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ़ कुरान एंड साइंस एज़ यू ऑल नो फ्राम लास्ट वीक वी रिज्यूम्ड आर डिस्कशंस ऑन कुरान एंड साइंस and uh, uh, we wish to connect our uh, discussion back to where it uh, it was uh, um, stopped back to where it uh, came to an end and uh, before we carry on with that uh, we uh, during the same uh, you know uh, transition period in order to resume back to the discussion of uh, numbers because uh, that was our previous uh, episode about letters and numbers Uh, there is one thing which uh, uh, I I'd like to discuss with uh, with my or with all my viewers of all ages because uh, it is very important to understand the importance and the reasons to discuss uh, the sciences with respect to Quran. Why? Because uh, for some reason the interpretation of uh, the divine scriptures whereas it was um, whether it was uh, the biblical scriptures or the quranic scriptures they all needed a divine interpreter they all needed somebody with divine knowledge to interpret the coded themes and the coded messages and the mysteries which were embedded in certain words in certain terms in certain uh, Uh, numerical values of uh, the certain um, commands because the divine scripture is meant for the entire humanity and is meant for uh, a, a large period of time and is sent down for the benefit of the mankind so in order to clearly understand the very reason that why are we having this discussion in the first place quran and science in order to understand we should ask uh, a few questions from ourselves that uh, when allah subhanahu wa taala when he created this universe why did he send the prophets and uh, why did he send so many prophets all right so he sent prophets and uh, as we ask our children in the classrooms that okay the prophets were sent down to guide the people to guide the masses so it means that uh, the almighty who created human being by giving them the intelligence by giving them the uh, the power of decision the power of choice that is the only difference between the ashraful makhluqat or the superior being that is the human being that he has the human mind the hu- the human head has been gifted has been granted the kind of brain which uh, which has a huge capacity a huge potential for uh, developing knowledge for observation for intelligence for reasoning for logic logic and for calculating and processing the the stimuli around them like for example all uh, the animals all the creatures have been given the senses so it is the human being the human being has also been given uh, has been gifted with senses the five senses the sense of uh, sight the sense of hearing sense of speech uh, 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 sorry a uh, sense of taste sense of smell and the sense of touch and these are all the receptors and all these five senses they receive the stimuli around us and through their own uh, through uh, uh, the the capacity through the um, a characteristic of each receptor the human brain processes that knowledge processes that uh, that uh, um, um, that element which is sensed by the nose which is seen by the eye which is heard by the ear and which is sensed by the touch the human brain it 
processes the knowledge and it stores it as the perceptive knowledge. Then it, the processing of uh, that knowledge it uh, continues into perceiving as it goes beyond just seeing or uh, uh, when it goes beyond the level, the stage of sensation. The first computation is that of sensation. That is the sensation, the sense of smell, the sense of touch, the sense of sight, the sense of hearing. So those sensations are processed into perceptions and that perception, it enhances the intelligence, it enhances the reasoning power, the logical thinking and gives way to creativity on the basis of which the human being, the human mind is capable of discovering, inventing, exploring, finding things, putting them to its use, using its mind for various purposes, good as well evil, good and bad, both. And the best example of it is, uh, uh, is seen when, uh, when we hear the story or when we read the story of Cain and Abel or Habil and Qabil, the two sons of Adam. And it happened so early on that it is, uh, according to all the scriptures, the description is the same, whether you pick up the Bible, whether you pick up uh, any other um, uh, scripture and the Quran, that one brother felt jealous or envious with the other. And that, that envy or that jealousy, it rose to such level that it uh, turned uh, into a very evil intention, so much so that it resulted him, uh, it resulted in one brother killing the other, murdering. That was the first murder of humanity. All right. Meaning to say that even when the, let's say the human population was so scanty, was so scarce, evil could occur. The human being had the capacity to, to do good as well as evil. So that is why the Almighty Subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down prophets so that the humans or the human intelligence can be rightly guided and it can work according to the guidance of the Almighty. Then all the prophets of all the uh, uh, 125,000 uh, uh, prophets, they were all uh, of various uh, categories and capacities. That some of them were teachers, some of them were instructors, some of them helped people in uh, um, uh, inventing tools, some of them taught people how to read, write and to um, create and to manufacture basic tools and to put them to the use. For example, the Prophet Idris. Prophet Idris is uh, said to be the fourth prophet in line and he was the one who was basically uh, the tutor who uh, invented the pen for people and told people or taught people how to write with the help of a pen. He uh, invented the whole, the, the first pen that we use now, we call stylus or any kind of pen, those, the modifications came, um, you know, we all know the, uh, the uh, uh, all the modifications and all the modernization and the stages of pen, whether it was a quill or um, crafted with reed or whatever. So that was the first pen. Then he also helped people in crafting various different tools for uh, like uh, scissors and knives and taught them to, uh, to cut and craft uh, dresses, clothing for themselves and various other things. So it means that the human, human has been given intelligence but if let alone, if left unguided, if allowed to go free, it can cause havoc. And the doomsday or the day of judgment uh, and the doomsday or the end of time which is still unpredictable, which is still, you know, seems very far, far away. Could have happened a long time ago if it wasn't for the prophets, if it wasn't for the scriptures. Then the second question, and then among the prophets, there were some Rasuls, some were Nabi. 
meaning some were just messengers and teachers and guides like Prophet Idris, and then some were uh, Nabi, some, uh, who, uh, some were sent down with the, with the uh, Sharia, some came down with Sharia, some came down with the, uh, with the uh, proper code of ethics. They gave a code of ethics, laws and principles and rules to be followed by, by all the human generations there. Then we see uh, in, uh, in our uh, study of uh, Quran and any other scripture that when the people at large, when they collectively transgressed, when they went uh, against the teachings of the prophets, despite their, uh, their warnings, despite their teaching, this, despite their guidance, when they transgressed very strongly against the laws of the Almighty, against the, the guidance and against the teachings of the Almighty, in the sense that uh, the transgression was affecting a large number of people. The transgression and oppression was turning into tyranny and the masses and the common people were being affected and a, 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 a tyrannical rule was widespread. So that is when we see that after numerous warnings the Allah Ta'ala who is Rahman Rahim no doubt but there was a time when the transgressors needed to be stopped so among the other attributes of the Almighty he is Qahar and he is Jabbar so he sent down his wrath to those people to the nations in order to stop the transgression meaning to say that and when we study the these transgressed nations and when we see and when we study like for example when we study the uh, the the nation of uh, prophet hud when we study the nation of uh, um, the the people of samud especially uh, like uh, all these people the the uh, you know the uh, prophet saleh's nation qom samud was the nation of prophet saleh and all these when they were given warnings they boasted on their scientific genius they boasted that uh, okay fine let let this uh, uh, let any wrath come we have built houses that are so strong that even an earthquake cannot shatter them meaning to say that uh, if we study these uh, calamities these uh, 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 the wrath that befell on uh, certain nations, if we study them deeply and if we study them scientifically, we see that although Allah Almighty, who is Alim, who is the creator of all ulum, who is the creator of all, of, of all knowledge, of all learning, and he gave, he um, uh, equipped his prophets with that divine learning, with that divine knowledge because every prophet of his time and his knowledge was above the rest of his people. The knowledge and ilm of each prophet was far above the knowledge of even the smartest person in his nation because they were the divinely guided. They were guided and they were um, taught by the divine authority. But when we see that uh, when the learning and when the scientific knowledge and when the intelligence was used so strongly in order to oppress people, in order to be cruel, in order to, to facilitate their transgression, and when no heed was given to any of the warnings, any of the teachings, any of the guidance, any of the... Um, Promonitions. Then the wrath came upon. Very interestingly, we see that uh, the Prophet Noah's uh, uh, nation was uh, was killed by uh, by the storm, the big, uh, the huge storm, the big storm, uh, the big flood. Sorry. And uh, at that time also, they posted on the high-rise buildings that they said that okay, we can climb up on the mountains, we can you know build high towers, and we can save ourselves. But we see that nothing was saved. No one was saved except for those who climbed aboard the Ark of Salvation. 
Then we see the Qawm Samud, the people of Samud. When they were warned by Prophet Saleh that your transgression is going to call upon the wrath of the Almighty and they had heard about the previous wraths and they boastfully told the Prophet of, his, of their time, Prophet Saleh, that our houses are too strong, they are too, um, uh, too stable, they can withstand any flood, they can withstand any, uh, uh, any earthquake, any calamity, any storm. So let your God send the wrath. And we see that the people of uh, Samud, they were not killed by any storm, they were not killed by any earthquake. In fact, they were killed by a loud scream, as it's described chinghar or scream or a cry what we can scientifically uh, scientifically interpret it as the the uh, the ultrasonic uh, sound the sound waves at ultrasonic frequency which can pierce the eardrums and which can pierce the the uh, uh, the nerves it, it it can cause death they were sitting very nicely in their houses, no earthquake, no storm, nothing. They were warned. For three days, the warning came in form of disease, skin disease, when their the skin colors changed. They were given warning for three days. Their skin color changed from, from yellow to red to green, and then eventually they went through this, uh, this wrath. So what I mean to say here, is that science or intelligence without gui guidance <coughs> excuse me intelligence without guidance can be disastrous and that is the sole purpose why the almighty never left the earth devoid of any prophet devoid from any hadi devoid from any leader who is divinely and right rightly chosen selected to be the, uh, the authority, to be the divine authority upon the people, to be the hujjat upon the people. So this uh, brings us to that uh, famous uh, uh, hadith that we have uh, heard so much about, that we uh, repeat so much in our majalis, in our lectures. The hadith is the of uh, Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I'm leaving amongst you Two weighty things. Two weighty things, Quran and Ahlul Bayt. Because Quran was the final word of the Almighty, was the final word of Allah, was the final word which was to remain until the Day of Judgment and which will be uh, the witness. The Quran will be the witness upon the people, whether we took guidance from it or not. The Quran itself will speak on the Day of Judgment about the guidance, about its use as the guidance, as the manual from the people. And of course, even in the times of Rasul Akram wasallam, when it was being revealed, and it was revealed in Arabic, and in the words of Quran, the Almighty says that we have revealed this Quran to you in Arabic so that you can understand and comprehend very easily. Even though that there were masters of uh, Arabic literature in Rasul Akram's time, Rasulullah's time, but many of them, uh, um, most of the commandments, most of the ayahs could not be clearly understood and they needed interpret interpretation and explanation from, uh, uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? It came in their language, it came in their uh, in their uh, uh, in the language which they had mastered and which they were proud of many of uh, the many people were highly eloquent in their language but they still needed a guide they still needed rasulullah to interpret it and to explain it to them because for a book to be sent down till the end of time it had to have deeper meaning, coded messages, and of course, a word which is so heavy and so eloquent 
that it rises above any intelligence, above anybody's word and above anybody's eloquence. So now we see that uh, uh, the Holy Quran is like, you know, it's far from uh, any comparison. Nobody can bring themselves to compare the eloquence of the Najul Balagha, which is the word of the rightly chosen, rightly selected Imam, who is the door to all knowledge, leading to Rasul Akram So today let's uh, quickly discuss a few of the harms and damages and the disasters that the science caused without being guided or without uh, or uh, without being guided or without consulting the the divine authority without taking any help from the guided authority and by by neglecting or by undermining that authority by taking it for granted that this is something separate from the worldly knowledge from the worldly disciplines that it is only religious and it's a book of religion alone and it has nothing to do with the scientific and the technological advancements that are taking place now. Another question which I like uh, then science without guidance yes so uh, for that purpose the Almighty sent down the Rasikhuna Filil. These divinely chosen, divinely selected uh, uh, guides, the Rasuls, and after Rasul Akram, his 12 chosen, selected Imams, the one who would follow Rasul Akram, they were called the Rasikhuna Filil, that they are the rightly taught, the rightly guided people. They are the one who preserve the, no, the divine knowledge. They are the one who are the caretakers, who are the keepers, who are the uh, who are the uh, uh, who are there to preserve the divine knowledge and to guide the humanity till the end of time. So, um, for example, um, before I come to the to the damages that the modern sciences uh, or the, in the modern times uh, uh, have caused to humanity, I'll give an example that uh, uh, until until the seventh Imam, when we have uh, uh, we see that uh, there were some kind of uh, you know uh, a school system, uh, like we see the first school or first uh, um, uh, a proper. Uh, let's say a, a proper, proper organized way of uh, teaching or imparting, it starts from the fifth Imam, like uh, Imam Muhammad Baqir al-Salam, known as Baqir al-Uloom. Baqir al-Uloom, the title itself describes that Baqir al-Uloom means the one who disintegrates knowledge. Meaning Imam Muhammad Baqir al-Salam, he was the first uh, one who branched out the various disciplines of knowledge for people because until then the uh, types of learning and the types of knowledge the disciplines they were very few they were like uh, uh, only philosophy literature um, astronomy to some extent and there were very few disciplines which were known to people and which people relied on for learning and there was no formal learning and there was no uh, formal way of documenting and reading and writing that is why we see that uh, Imam uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen he was the first one who had recorded his uh, uh, who had uh, who had uh, 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 who was the first one to write down and to record some things through his letters um, uh, uh, through his sermons and we most, uh, most of the people at that time, they relied on the, um, uh, the verbally or uh, the committing to memory, all the, the disciplines of learning, they were, rely, uh, they were basically relied upon their memory, upon the, uh, how good somebody's memory was. And writing and reading was not so, uh, let's say it was not so common. M uh, many people, most people, most commoners did not comfortably read and write. So there was no formal school as such. There were like informal types of learning dependent on uh, sermons and lectures and uh, through that. 
So Imam Muhammad Bakr al-Salam, he being the Bakr al-Ulum, he disintegrated and he branched out various sciences, various uh, uh, types of disciplines. And after whom we see that uh, his son Imam Jafar al-Sadiq al-Salam, he got the, uh, the time and he got the opportunity to establish the, the, the largest school at that time. Uh, some narrations say that uh, he had 400 students and some narrations even uh, say that uh, he, uh, his students, uh, they went uh, over 4,000 in various times. So, and at that time in his school, the principles of uh, um, uh, learning, uh, like uh, uh, the education principles, the academic principles that were taught, they ranged from, from philosophy, literature, from agnostics, mathematics, astronomy, chemistry, biology, of all the sciences that we now have categorized, we have compartmentalized those knowledges. Basic knowledge we see that before anybody specialized into anything, the basic knowledge was that philosophy. The beginning or the basic or the root of any discipline, of any principle that was taught was philosophy. That's why we see that whether it's Al-Kindi, who was the greatest mathematician of his time, he was first a philosopher before he went into mathematics. Al-Khwarzami, philosopher. Jabir ibn Hayyan, philosopher. Philosophy opens the mind. Philosophy tunes the mind. It tunes the reasoning and logical computation, the logical processing skills of the brain to think, to observe, to reason and to process all the, uh, the, the data that the brain is receiving. Once, the, once philosophy does its part, then the person, student, recognizing his aptitude went into a particular direction. So. Uh, the example comes uh, to mind with the help of uh, 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 an incident that uh, Jabir ibn Hayyan, as uh, you all must have known, that uh, uh, he is the father of modern chemistry. And even today, most, uh, I mean, almost all uh, the principles of chemistry which are studied even today, they were all uh, documented by Jabir ibn Hayyan. He was the direct student of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. So, at that time, he had discovered the process of liquidizing hydrogen. But Imam alayhi salam did not encourage it. In fact, he, was, uh, uh, he had advised not to go ahead with that. Because we see that liquidizing of hydrogen now is used for the destructive purposes. It's so highly um, damaging, it's highly explosive. Meaning to say that the purpose of a certain thing, of a certain scientific advancement, if it's not for the better, betterment of humanity, or if the benefit is far less as compared to the, to the harms or to the damages or to the dangers that it may cause, if the damages and the dangers or the drawbacks outweigh the benefits, then all those things are discouraged or they are told to, to be held back. So that, that potentially damage, uh, 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 disastrous or dangerous thing does not fall into wrong hands. For example, a common day knowledge, for example, all, all the narcotics, they all originated, they are actually, they are all uh, grown in the fields. They all have benefits, like for example, hemp, like a, a poppy, like any other thing. They are grown in the fields, they are plants. Some of them are actually very lovely looking plants. But their benefits, medicinal uses, they were basically used as medicines. But their medicinal purposes, their medicinal uses or their benefits, they were not as, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the damages that those drugs or those chemical uh, 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 those, those chemical properties of those, uh, uh, those plants, those uh, things that could cause, those damages outweigh the benefits it gave. 
So that is why we now see that the cultivation of all those uh, plants is restricted. It's banned in many, uh, many places, many countries once the damages are known. So that is why we see that 1400 years ago, Parvardigar e Alam, Allah Almighty, He banned the alcohol. He banned, although alcohol is also, it's uh, fermented from what? From grapes, from fruits, from vegetables. It can be the, 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 the alcoholic drinks are fermented by various different fruits and vegetables. Fruits are not harmful. Grape is not harmful. It has many benefits. But to a certain degree, to a certain stage, eaten as grape is good, but turned into something else, processed into something else, it causes great damages. So that's why 1400 years ago, the Almighty, he banned all types of intoxicants. The word came as all intoxicants are haram. The list could be endless because back then opium was not discovered. Back then marijuana and all those things were, were not as refined as they are today. But drawing a line that all intoxicants are haram. So it's haram. You may go ahead and find out the list. So this is where the guidance is needed. The science in every form. That's why we see that even Einstein, all his hard work, all his energies were dispensed upon the productive, uh, the productive side of the, uh, the uh, uh, of physics in exploring in advancing in for the benefit of humanity but once the nuclear bomb uh, was uh, was um, was energized he drew himself back because he did not believe in causing destruction to humanity but we see that all the worldly scientists until they discover God, until they recognize that there is the final entity, there is some creator who is doing all this, until a scientist, it's happening even today. Now there, there's a group of scientists who are actually teaming up to create awareness and to draw lines to certain advancements that are being done today. For example, cloning. Cloning may sound very fascinating. That, you know, it's, uh, it's now, it's, it's an old story now that uh, the sheep named Dolly was cloned and like it was a successful cloning experiment. Recently, China has cloned uh, monkeys. And it's a very successful experiment that uh, the, the cloned monkey is doing very well. And it has, uh, and they have claimed that uh, the breakthrough in uh, cloning the primates is successful. And now, after cloning the primate, it's like cloning a human being is nearly possible. It's not so difficult after cloning success, successfully cloning a primate. So now, many conscientious, or let's say the scientists who have and who claim that they have discovered God through science. They said science doesn't discover, uh, the science that discovers God is the science that puts us, in the, puts us on the right direction, on the right path. On the, because to somebody it may sound very fascinating that wow, like we can, we can clone human beings Right, wow, yes, I, I would like to, I'd like to have a child, I would like to have a, a, a child who's a boy, who has, a, let's say, who has blue eyes, who has this color of hair, this type of color, uh, this color of skin, who is this tall, this big, and uh, uh, who should have this, this uh, 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 quality, who should have this kind of intelligence. But what would happen then? For example, the uh, IVF babies, they, uh, the, the, uh, the process or the experiment of uh, having IVF children, it started uh, about like 40 years ago. So in four decades, in 40 years, there have been 5 million children 
born out of IVF. All right, it's not as dangerous, it's not as harmful as cloning, but cloning means creating a human robot. So is that what we want? Meaning to say that uh, the design or the purpose of the Almighty creating us as a mixture of um, goods and bads. We all have certain good uh, um, qualities in us, some bad qualities in us. Some people have average looks, but they have super smart brains. Some have some other capacities. So every human being is a unique being. So is cloning a really fascinating thing to do? Why wasn't it uh, uh, done or why, uh, 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 what's wrong with the old fashioned way? Um, uh, I'm sorry, um, don't, uh, don't mean, to sign, uh, I mean to sound controversial here. What I mean to emphasize upon is that the reason why every person is born as an entity that the Almighty calls every single person a miracle. Every single human being that is born, it's a miracle. There are uh, two children born to the same parents. Those two children can be totally different from each other in their likes, dislikes, in their moods, in their temperament, even in their looks. Some may take totally uh, towards the, to the father's side. Some may take totally towards the mother's side. All right, fine, genetics. But by interfering with the genetics and the, 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 the DNA code in, in order to, the benefit lies, yes, the benefit of the, uh, of the um, for example, um, the interference with the, uh, with the DNA code, if it is only to, to stop some genetically born diseases, to, to uh, cut down some, um, uh, gen genetically recurring diseases, fatal diseases, that is one thing. But if that is, the fine line is crossed and the benefit goes towards the destruction because if you want a robot for a child who doesn't fall sick, um, always uh, uh, does well, performs well, is a good athlete, good student, whatever we want him or her to be, would that have the same capacity to love and to have those kinds of things? Then what will happen to the uniqueness of each individual? So the science with no bounds, the science with no guidance can lead to total destruction and annihilation. The, the global warming is one example of man interfering in the biological makeup, in the, e in the ecosystem, interfering it, breaking the chains that link the ecosystem so very well in such a beautifully and such an intricate way that when even a couple of links were taken out of that chain, we see that the whole um, uh, system has uh, suffered because of it. So now we see a large scale uh, um, deforestation, we see large scale uh, uh, desertification, large, large scale droughts in many, many reg uh, regions, we, uh, we see large scale floods in many places, we see large scale, uh, you know, uh, like uh, the, 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 the global, uh, the polar ice melting so rapidly. So all these things are happening when the science is not taken in the right direction. So that is why the divine authority, divine guidance by the divine, divinely described codes is important. It's so beautiful when we read the Najul Balagha that Imam Amirul Mu'mineen, he, we see like, like I said that there was no uh, um, formal uh, system of education and there was no formal school at that time, but we see that uh, Amir al Momini, he did not spare a single opportunity, a single second in imparting the science wherever the need came. So, uh, like for example, like, uh, if you read through uh, some of his sermons, like a sermon from beginning from Sermon 184, 
going moving on to sermon 185 as a response uh, to one of the kharjis When one of the Kharji called out that uh, uh, when one of the Kharji called out that uh, you know the, the all powers lie with the with the with the Almighty, all powers lie with the with the Allah, and when when he raised the snow, uh, slogan of Lakat Zahar al Haq, for Allah Lakat Zahar al Haq, that um, that, that uh, there is no authority above Allah, so. He was teaching that to the Imam. So the Imam called out, to, uh, telling him to shut up. And uh, then telling him that like, what do you know about the Haq? What do you know about the divine authority? What do you know about Allah? Because when Allah created this universe, you were nothing. You were nowhere. And, and then, his sermon, he goes on with the beautiful discussion about the creation of some animal species, about giving example of uh, the tiny ant, and such a beautiful description of ant by Amir al Momini that if you look at the ant at which you can't even see properly unless you pick it up or hold it up close, and that little ant has a whole complete body, it has a whole nervous system, it has a whole blood circulatory system, it has eyes, it has a tongue to communicate, it has brain, it has the whole complete body. What do you know about Haq? So this is the divinely chosen, this is the divinely selected Imam. These are the guides that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us to guide us scientifically whether we are in times of war, whether we are conducting any business transaction, whether we are dealing with any uh, um, path of our lives. So the knowledge of the divinely selected Imam is incomparable because it's been given, it's been imparted from the, from the, directly from the Aleem, from the one who created all knowledge. So this was the purpose to keep ourselves connected with the Quran because some of the principles are very uh, easily at, not I would not say understood because they all need very uh, uh, deep and detailed clarification and interpretation with the help of tafasirs and uh, that uh, some of our mufassirins have uh, done a very fine job doing that but some of the surahs and some of the ayahs they at least to, for our understanding, they clearly mention the signs, they clearly mention the codes about, about the rain, about the water, about, uh, about, the, about the wind, about, uh, uh, about the plants, about, like, uh, about the fruits mentioned, about uh, the medicinal benefits um, uh, for so many things, about certain animals. Like in, I said in the previous programs, there are some surahs which are named after those animals and yet there is only a mention of that particular animal in a very small ayah, in one or two verses at the most. Ankabut, the spider, and uh, the surah Namal, Nahal surah, uh, the bee, surah Nahal, the bee. And we see the description of more animals in, uh, besides those surahs in which it is mentioned. Like for example, when all scriptures contain the story of Jonah of, or Hazrat Yunus salam, being swallowed up by the whale. And now people are discussing and discovering that, you know, they have been recently, there was um, uh, uh, some, some story, some, some news pieces about uh, some incidents that happened to some, uh, some divers and some deep sea explorers that uh, they were swallowed up by some, uh, some of them were swallowed by sharks in, on different occasion and they, they were eventually, um, you know, fished out or uh, rescued alive from the belly of the shark and they survived and what they had gone through the 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 uh, all all the chemical the, the the gastric juices in the belly of the shark they they made him suffer through those skin diseases and everything and we see the whole description in the quran that prophet yona prophet yunus salam, he was swallowed up by the whale not a shark and uh, he remained inside the whale for 40 days it says 
the scripture says and when he was eventually thrown out uh, of the veil he has suffered strong lesions on his uh, skin on his body and to cure those the almighty told him that not very far from you we have we, we have this uh, you have this pumpkin patch the creeper so you just uh, drag yourself to that and use those pumpkins to um, uh, heal yourself to heal your body break them so prophet yona nabi yuna sallallahu salam he used those pumpkins and he rubbed those uh, the pumpkin juices on his body and that helped him cure his lesions so in one small incident the almighty discussed his wrath told what what is done to the uh, i mean uh, what can somebody go through when when allah taala wants to deal with somebody this is how he deals with and then the cure was also given till the end of time so like i said that like quran is loaded with all the scientific principles and it's only up to us if we do not just put it aside and we keep consulting it for all the inventions because the the mysteries of the universe discussed in the quran surah tariq tariq actually means the pulsar the strong star the pulsar which is still a mystery in the cosmos the, the uh, if you google pulsars you can even find the sound recordings of the pulsars done by nasa and surah tariq describes the working of the pulsar in fact if we put together the three surahs that is surah najm surah shams surah tariq together and if you study them together and study their content and uh, try to link them you will find a detailed description of uh, the black holes surah tariq actually discusses points towards the black holes so it is not black holes were recent discoveries they are very modern discoveries so quran is not ancient is not just the book that tells us to offer prayers uh, fast for a month and uh, um, uh, zakat and hajj and the huquq al ibad in fact all these ibadahs they have their own scientific importance and benefits as well much deeper than we can comprehend because more and more benefits more and more scientific values and scientific importance and benefits of offering salah of offering rose of keeping fasts doing hajj and all those things they are coming up they are being proven by scientists more and more in fact many cancer patients have been uh, have been um, advised to fast as long as for a month in order to heal their body of the destructive of the uh, of the radical cells this is what we are trying to make an effort to bring the science and quran together which was done which were separated about 2 to 300 years ago by in the name of modern education in the way in the name of modernization the way of name of uh, you know putting the religion aside and all this harm was mainly done during the the uh, the colonialism which was spread like uh, in in a vast uh, number of countries in a vast number of um, like uh, across different continents like like we see so in the name of uh, modern education we have suffered a lot already so let's go back to the basic rules which be- benefited the humanity and which had led into very um, um, which a large number of inventions and discoveries and to the sciences which actually were focused on benefiting the humanity so with this note we take a leave until our next program take care of yourselves pray for us the velai team and take care of yourselves and try to find new uh, links and new connections with whatever your uh, area of uh, specialty is with whatever you are studying 
I'm, and uh, I can guarantee that whatever discipline you are following, you will find amazing links in the Quran discussed 1400 years ago. Wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.